Okay, so now let's quickly do the same for the SVR results in high resolution. So here we're going to create a new code cell. And again, let's do it efficiently. We're going to go to our polynomial regression implementation. Scroll down here to find the code for the high resolution. Select it, copy it, and go back to our SVR implementation. Paste that here. And now again, let's see what we have to replace. All right, so first let's make the obvious change again. Polynomial regression by SVR and then same let's check row by row so in the first two rows what do we have to do well of course we have to reverse the scaling for the two x's here right because x is still scaled we have to put that back in the original scale so that we can get x grid in the original scale as well okay so let's again call our SCX scalar object from which we call again the inverse underscore transform there we go method apply to x and then same for the second x here, we call our SCX scalar object from which we call the inverse underscore transform. There we go. Method applied to x. Okay, great. I think we're good for the first row. Now, second row. The second row is actually fine because x grid is now back into the original shape. So we don't have to change anything here. So then row number three, well, here same, we have to apply the inverse transformation on both the inputs X and the output Y. So let's do that. Starting with X, we call our SCX scalar object from which we call the inverse transform method applied to X. And then same here, we call our SCY scalar object from which we apply the inverse transform method. Here we go, apply to Y. Excellent. So now I think we're good with row number three. So now let's move on to row number four. So in row number four, X grid is fine. It's already back into the original scale, but the predictions are not fine. Of course, we're going to replace this whole prediction here of the polynomial regression by actually, let's make it efficient by the prediction we got here. But of course, we're going to replace X by X grid. So let's take all this. Let's crawl back down. And let's replace this linrec2 predict polyrec fit transform x grid by our SVR prediction, after which we replace, of course, x by x grid. Okay, do you think we're done now? Well, actually, bad news, we're not done yet. There is one final thing we need to do. Do you see what it is? Well, you notice that here we apply the predict method to x grid and x grid is not scaled because here we apply the inverse transform on x when making x grid. So here we just need to apply one last time, I promise, the SCX scalar object on x grid so that we get the scaled values of x grid so that, therefore, the predict method can make its predictions in the right format. All right, so that was the last little difficulty here. So let's do this. Let's call again for the last time our scalar object SCX from which we call the, there it is, transform method applied to this time X grid. Okay, so now I think we're really done. The only way to check this is by running the cell and let's see what we get. We get the beautiful curve in high resolution of the SVR model. Congratulations. That was a pretty tough one. And if you did it all by yourself first, well, double congrats. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next classification model, which will be the decision tree regression model. I look forward to seeing you in its practical activity. And until then, enjoy machine learning.